Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. And thank you for stopping by. I do appreciate it. Um, I'm looking forward to being in Maputo for the IMF uh, Africa Rising Conference in conjunction with the Republic of Mozambique. Um, and uh, looking forward to that a great deal, actually. And I took a photograph from the sea as the sun was setting over Maputo a few years ago. And I'll show you that photograph because I rather like it. And of course, they do have fabulous prawns there as well. I woke up Hannah a lot earlier this morning because yesterday we had such a debacle getting to work and her to school. And she told me that she did not love me even a little iota. And I said, but Hannah, you're my world. She said with some brevity, well, you're not mine. Then just before I got out of the car, she says, do you forgive me? And I thought, women. And I said, I forgive you everything. I took this photograph yesterday evening of Nairobi, seen from my office. Political reflections, Thailand's army declared martial law on Tuesday. Troops were patrolling in Bangkok, stopping some traffic from entering the city. Placing sandbags outside a city centre police headquarters, witnesses said. Soldiers at secure television stations, one Thai army general said, we declared a state of emergency, it's not a coup. Because of the situation, it's not stable. They kill each other every day, the general who declined to be identified told Reuters. We need cooperation from them to announce the people do not panic, this is not a coup, the general said. Of course, the economy has been softening. And uh, the state planning agency cut its forecast for 2014 growth to between one and a half and two and a half percent, from a range of three to four percent previously. Um, I'll put up a photograph uh, from Bangkok. I came across this sentence or in an article on global research: the Brzezinski doctrine from the Eurasian Balkans is the definition of non-linear warfare and subversive destabilization. Gene Sharp's writings have also provided pivotal tactical advice in advancing the West's non-linear warfare strategy. Taking the use of non-state actors even further, the West has a history of promoting militarized proxy groups to carry out its policies. This is most clearly seen in Kosovo, Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya and Syria. And then when I was looking up Gene Sharp, who I knew about previously, but I was looking for something uh, to speak about, I came across this quote uh, that he, he re-quoted from somebody called Kenneth Boulding. That which is, is possible. That which is, is possible. Pretty powerful, I thought. Uh, Ukrainian riot policemen hold the formation against rioters during the exercises for mass disturbances suppression in the southern Ukrainian city of Odessa. Photograph Alexei Kratsov, AFP. Well, President Zuma saying part of the capacity needed by the AU is the establishment of the African standby force for rapid deployment in crisis areas without delays. Um, the Economist writing about Kenya says the governments of both countries, disappointed with the results, have reduced their level of cooperation. It is hard to see where the president can begin. And that was what I was writing about when I said the dashboard is blinking amber. And I quoted Don DeLillo uh, from Point Omega. It says, when you strip away surfaces, when you see into it, What's left is terror. This is the thing that literature was meant to cure, the epic poem, the bedtime story. Interesting piece about Al-Shabaab's new face in Kenya by a fellow called Jay Bahadur, who says, with the notable exception of Westgate, terrorism incidents in Kenya have largely consisted of lobbed grenades and makeshift IEDs. The perpetrators have tended to be sympathetic to Al-Shabaab's ideology, but unlikely to have direct ties to the group. But there are signs that Al-Shabaab top brass are beginning to take a more active role in Kenya, 
where the security climate has rapidly deteriorated over the past year, despite the East African country receiving vast intelligence support from American, British and Israeli spy agencies. In a 23rd April suicide attack, two militants detonated a vehicle-borne improvised explosive device, a BBIED, at a police station in the Nairobi neighborhood of Pangani, killing two police officers as well as the attackers. Many believe that the station was not the intended target, but that the bombers had been on their way to another site, perhaps a nightclub, when they were pulled over for driving on the wrong side of the road. The blast was atypically powerful, and it is possible that the secondary bomber was wearing a suicide vest to augment the main explosives contained in the vehicle's boot. It was the second time in under two months that a sophisticated VBIED, bearing the signs of more direct Al-Shabaab involvement, had found its way into a Kenyan police station. On 11th March, an impounded car brought to an anti-terror police unit station in Mombasa was later found to contain six pipe bombs attached to a mobile phone detonator containing enough plastic explosives to collapse a multi-story building. And then saying, given the sophistication of what's going on in terms of VBIEDs, clearly indicates to me that Amniat is now fully in charge, said a fellow an analyst from the ICG. There may be other such attacks in the works, according to an analyst source, a suicide VBIED attack in early April targeting the National Intelligence Agency Operations Center at Nairobi's Nyati house was disrupted only when one of the attackers failed to gain entry and was shot outside the gate. The prospect of a more centrally planned hands-on approach by Al-Shabaab in Kenya is worrying, especially in light of the diverse tactics the group has employed to create havoc in Somalia. A proliferation of complex attacks using a combination of gunmen and suicide bombers strikes on government buildings and perhaps even targeted assassinations against Kenyan politicians and security forces officials may be in Kenya's future. So far, the Kenyan government has had few answers to the mounting threat other than an indiscriminate crackdown on the Somali community in a bizarre neighborhood watch type initiative. Without a radical rethinking of counter-terrorism policy in the near future, Kenya risks further erosion of state control and lasting damage to its economic prospects. That's a very accurate article, I'm afraid. It's very binary. It seems to have sort of gone to a new normal without anyone sort of trying to rein it in. Russia is close to signing a decades-long contract to supply natural gas to China at a price that would value the deal at about $400 billion, according to Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev. So you can see the, the fracas in Ukraine has turned Russia east and the price looks pretty aggressive as well. One of the analysts saying better to sign a contract at a le relatively low price now than not to sign it at all. Especially if China agrees to provide prepayments of loans which Gazprom could use in pipeline construction and field development. International markets, currencies, the euro is at 137.12, and I think it's going to struggle to go higher than here. I think it's probably going to head towards 133.80 on the basis that um, Jack is going to do something dramatic in June. Dollar index 80.02. Japanese yen 101.54. Touched 101.10 yesterday, which is the highest level for the yen since February the 5th. Swiss franc 0.8920, the pound 168.18. Aussie 0 0.9300 fell 0.3%, touched 0.9295, lower since May 6. Uh, sort of dovish comments out of the RBA's minutes. Uh, India rupee 58.57, my target remains 57.50, South Korean 110, 22.35, the real 220.58, uh, Egyptian pound 711.67, so it's found um, stabilized over the last 48 hours. South African Rand 1037.56. Dollar index, I'll put up a three month chart. I think it's still capped below this resistance area, which is not much higher, but it keeps coming up to the end and not being able to break higher. Euro dollar 137.12.
Um, interesting comment by the ECB Governing Council member UL Nowotny, who said, we have seen that banks are accepting negative deposit rates, that they see it as an insurance premium for an especially safe deposit. Interesting. Um, ECB easing in June is becoming the consensus view, says, said Etsuko Yamashita at Sumitomo Mitsui Banking, but that's what I was telling you after my visit to Milan. Dollar yen, I'll put up a three month chart, 101.54, safe haven bid has taken it uh, much higher. And then this story tickled my interest. Prime Minister Abe Shinzo turned to Nobel laureate Robert Schiller to try and restore a vital ingredient of his economic revolution, optimism. Abe met the Yale University professor in Tokyo on March 10 to discuss how to re reverse what the Japanese leader calls the shrunken mindset entrenched in the country after two decades of economic stagnation. With a public relations team of about 100 TV appearances and use of buzzwords like Abenomics, Abe is trying to revive a risk-taking spirit to unlock the investment, spending and wage gains needed to sustain his reflation plan. It's important to have it sound like a revolution, said Schiller. Animal spirits, uh, he, he said, launching animal spirits is about capturing the public spirit, the zeitgeist. A large part of Abenomics is psychology, says someone else. He's trying to lift the national mood by emotional contagion or changing people's perceptions by blanketing them with positive messages. And then... Um, Somebody saying, if my mindset is negative, this will likely have an effect on the whole country. I have to be as cheerful as possible. Well, it's not wrong, but uh, how you do that is pretty tricky. Gold, 1294.04. The price pattern, which is condensing into a narrow and narrow range, is signaling a big break. Typically, it can happen either way. I, for one thing, it's going to be to the downside. Crude oil, 102.20. Trade's real expensive in my view. <coughs> Um, the chart of the day I'm going to put up is showing how the India's uh, BSC Sensex Index has climbed 387% in the past decade, about 13 times more than the Shanghai Composite Index. Tai Bart, I'll put up a one-year chart. It's not at uh, 52 week lows, but it's not far off. It slid 0.6%, biggest intraday retreat in two months. Um, I was following the AFDB's forecast for Africa via the AFDB and Javier Blas of the FT, and AFDB has forecast Africa GDP at 4.8% in 2014 and 5.7% in 2015, up from 3.9% in 2013. I found this in, in, infographic, Africa continuing to grow faster than the world. Um, I'll put that up. And then, uh, finally, I found the original report by the United Nations Mission in the Republic of South Sudan, Conflict, a uh, human rights report, and it makes pretty awful reading. Saying that fighting started in the capital, Juba, on the evening of the 15th of December, initially among members of the Presidential Guard. The SPLA split between forces loyal to the government and forces loyal to former Vice President Rika Machar. Fighting moved rapidly to various military installations and by the next morning into civilian neighbourhoods. After forces loyal to Mr. Machar were defeated, government forces entered neighbourhoods primarily populated by civilians of Noya origin and began targeting Noya men. Multiple witnesses told the Human Rights Division that mixed groups of security forces went house to house, killing Noya men or taking them away. Thousands fled their homes, and neighborhoods were left emptied and often destroyed by security forces. In one incident, at least 300 men of Noya origin were rounded up from the Gudele neighborhood and detained, then killed in the facility, used by several security forces as a joint operations center. Um, uh, Sam Smith, 68, tweeted, For the first time since Afghanistan in 1997, the Red Cross is resorting to airdrops to get aid to people in South Sudan. I'll put up that photograph as well. Over 3.7 million new IDPs in Sub-Saharan Africa in 2013, representing a 55% increase from 2012. South African all shares back near a record high. It's up 8.56% this year. Dollar versus Rand, 1037.61. Um, I think will trend towards 10. Egyptian pounds stabilized in the last two sessions at 7.1167. The Egyptian stock market, the best performing stock market in Africa, up 28.36%.
this year. Nigeria all shared down 2.48%. The Ghana Stock Exchange up 5.19%. But you know, you've had all that eroded plus because of the weak SEDI. Global Witness has put out a hard-hitting report on the DRC, Glencore and the Gatekeeper, it's called. Interesting piece I found, how Portugal's economy is being saved by Angola, the revenge of history. Saying that 100,000 Portuguese working as immigrants in Angola's booming construction sector. When the crisis hit Portugal, Pedro Casas Coelho went searching for help. He visited Angola. That was in 2011. Eduardo dos Santos then declared, rather generously, Angola is ready to help Portugal face the crisis. According to some estimates, Angola's investments in Portugal are between 10 billion euros and 15 billion euros. AFDB is forecasting Kenya GDP to hit 5.7% this year. I'm a seller of that. Uh, Car4 apparently is set to make an entry into Kenya by leasing space at the upcoming Two Rivers shopping centre in Rwanda. Um, that should be interesting. Um, apparently they're, they're taking 100,000 square feet out of 620,000 square feet. Um, L'Oreal says nice and lovely, which was their acquisition last year, a range of beauty products it acquired from Paul Kenithia, contributed two-thirds of its sales in the region. Um, uh, L'Oreal says it sold 40 million units of skincare, cosmetics, hair care, hair colour and hair styling products last year, compared to 2 million products in 2012 when it only dealt with its dark and lovely brands in the Kenyan market. Patricia Itau attributed the growth in sales to the acquisition Nice and Lovely, which gave the beauty firm an entry into the mass retail market. The company declined to provide revenue figures. The acquisition of Nice and Lovely helped us to tap the low-end market given its price point. This makes it a significant business for us. It is now two-thirds of the business, with Dark and Lovely contributing a third of total revenue. Um, but Patricia did a mind speak last year. What a lot of fun that was. Um, and I'll put up a photograph from that event and also a link if you want to go back and watch what she said. With the arrival of new players and growing demand, Bamburi's market share has been decreasing over time and is now in the region of 39%. This is Lafarge in response. None of the players is dominant and there is therefore no possibility of abuse of the dominant position. Suspected Somali Al-Shabaab militants killed at least 12 people in an ambush in northern Kenya on Monday. Kenya shilling, last trading at 87.657, touched 87.80 yesterday, which was the weakest level on an intraday basis since August 12th. It's down only 1.7%, but it's not looking too good. Of course, there's a big uplift of dividends going on right now, which is probably weakening at some as well. Tourist arrivals, a key source of hard currency, have been cut by frequent gun and grenade attacks at NIC Bank. Britain, the US, and other Western governments have warned holidaymakers against Kenya. Indeed, they have. The Nairobi All Shares up 10.1939% this year. The NSE 20s up 0.25411% so far this year. Obviously, yesterday the shilling had a very poor session, retreated 0.33%, weakest level since August 12. Stock market traded soft, but on relatively low volume. Evacuations of tourists in Mombasa, coupled with a tsunami of travel warnings and a spike in asymmetric attacks, have begun to sap confidence. The Associated Press is reporting the U.S. Ambassador Bob Godek is announcing a downsizing of the U.S. footprint in Kenya. Markets are oftentimes the most honest messenger, shilling in the equity market is now turning defensive. The effects of a defensive posture can spread like wildfire through the economy. The all share eased 0.377%, the NSE 20 retreated 28.08 points. However, equity turnover was only something like 319 million against some very big numbers last week and 972 million in the immediate preceding session. Williamson T had become oversold, bounced 1.838%. Safari confirmed 1.17% to close at 13. Scan Group improved 2.13% to close at 48. That's a cheap share in my view. 
Kenya Airways suffered a backlash from the tourism news down 3.225%. Equity Bank was the most actively traded. And finally, Kenal Kodal continued its strong rally to close at plus 2.185%. Um, it's rebounded 10% over just two sessions. Once again, thank you for stopping by. If you want to follow the stock exchange in real time, just register on rich.co.k, get a password, go to Rich Live during trading hours, which is 9.30 to 3 o'clock Kenya time. Thank you.